Happy day before Thanksgiving for you pieces of shit out there. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. We're doing a little Thanksgiving special today. Something that we haven't really done this year. I don't know if I've ever done this before, but we're going through all three games on Thanksgiving. I'm going to give you game predictions. I'm going to give you the outlooks for the games, fantasy ranks for all the players in the games, my favorite player props, fall game prize picks, plays. Hopefully make your Thanksgiving a little bit more interesting. Turkey sucks. Family is really good. Football is the reason that we get through Thanksgiving. Your bets, your fantasy games is why we're here. You know, I haven't done it in a minute. So for those of y'all behind your screens, do me a favor. This one last, final, last time. Tuck your fucking shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's fucking eat. <laughs> I'll start off by saying there's a free square on prize picks right now. Justin Jefferson over 0.5 receiving yards. It is literally a free square. There's no reason not to go take it. If you're new to prize picks, if you haven't downloaded the prize picks app, use promo code BDGE when you do so. When you deposit $10 or more for the first time, they are going to double it. All right. They're going to double whatever you put down, and you can start your squares with Justin Jefferson over 0.5 receiving yards all right lock it the fuck in buffalo at detroit is the first game of the day minus nine for buffalo 54 point over under that is really really high now detroit's been they've been riding high man they have a three game win streak right now they've been getting better and better and it feels like every time we play against the lions you have a team or a fantasy options especially at the running back position that play against the lions they have been disappointing over the last few weeks we have a weird little flow here because buffalo played in detroit this previous week because i obviously have to move their game because of the weather so they played in detroit came back home now the bike in detroit so maybe they're a little bit comfortable with this field maybe they're a little bit comfortable with the conditions there even though it is a road game Allen is coming off his worst statistical game of the season however you know when we talk about fantasy 27 pass attempts was his second lowest number of the season seven rushing yards which is his lowest total of the season however if you look at what detroit has allowed now they've they've been good against running backs these last few weeks right like 15 for 22 against saquon last week 15 carries 22 yards the week before that herbert had 57 on the ground montgomery 37 on the ground scoreless yards the week before that they held aaron jones to 9 for 25 aj Dillon 11 for 34 so you're talking about 20 carries 59 yards miami the week before that didn't do shit so you're talking about a detroit lions run defense that's really 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 been improved which makes me a little bit nervous about devin singletary on the ground because he's their early down rusher of course but when you look at the quarterbacks in these situations however last week daniel jones said Seven for 50 and a touchdown on the ground. One week before that, Justin Fields, 13 for 147 and two touchdowns. But the week before that, Aaron Rodgers, four for 40 on the ground, which is a season high by far. So you're talking about all these quarterbacks. While the running backs are struggling, the quarterbacks have been thriving on the ground, and that is what Josh Allen does. So as of this recording, they do not have a Josh Allen rushing square up on prize picks yet, but whatever it is, I'm probably taking the over, although we're going to nail the over on his fantasy points because I think we see a bounce back here. When you look at the Lions' pass defense, they are horrible. They have the single lowest coverage grade as a team per PFF. They're the third worst pass rush graded team in the NFL as well so Josh Allen should get it done with his legs because that's what their defense allows Josh Allen should get it done through the air because that's also what their defense allows I love this offense Buffalo Josh Allen to get back on track I love his over 24 fantasy points on prize picks the auto starts are obviously Josh Allen Stefan Diggs I think Gabriel Davis is an auto start at this point against the Detroit Lions Devin Singletary you're starting because he's played well and again it's an overall good matchup where there should be a lot of scoring opportunities I don't know if he's going to have as much efficiency Isaiah McKenzie's just not a full-time player right now he's playing like 50 percent of the snaps so he's not someone I'm dying to get into my lineup even though it is a good matchup Dawson Knox is coming off a big game or relatively big game seven for seven he had a pretty good game the week before that but I wouldn't be surprised if he kind of flops in this one it's one of those whack-a-mole situations with tight ends you could do worse he's definitely a top 10 option right now because they should probably score like 30 points so I get Knox into my lineup James Cook is the other one that I think has had some breakout potential. He's played really, really well when he's gotten the carries, and he seems to get more work in games where Buffalo is obviously dominating the game script. This could be one of them, right? They can get up really big, and I could see James Cook getting double digit touches because maybe the second half or the entire fourth quarter he takes over as the running back here. When we look at Detroit, we have Amon Ra is obviously a clear starter here. Jamal Williams too. He's been he's been too good. Buffalo their run defense hasn't been amazing. They have a good pass rush, but overall I think most of the other parts of their defense 
defensive. I've been closer to mid than than elite. Now I think the the only player that's a real toss up here is is DeAndre Swift. Okay, now Swift has played last week thirty one percent of the snaps. 16% of the snaps the week before that. He's not very involved right now. He's clearly hampered, but you're seeing a little bit of an upward trajectory or snap count. So I think he might get more involved. I do think there's a chance that we see Swift get more work this week than he has the previous weeks. More time, a little bit more healthier. I could see a game where he gets like five plus targets. They are going to be trailing most likely. I could see them using him heavily in the passing game in this one. He's my RB29 in my rankings right now. So he is for sure like a flex option for you. But as I've been saying for the last month, very clear. He's very hurt, and you can definitely do with better options on your team. They do get him into the end zone every once in a while, so you're hoping for an end zone score. You're hoping for, I don't know if there's any other types of scores, but you're hoping for uh, a big play or involvement in the passing game. So he can get it done by one of three ways. The ceiling's really not been there because Jamal Williams is on the goal line. Jamal Williams is playing super well, but I think Swift is, is playable in this matchup despite what it looks like on paper. So my game prediction for this one, 31-17, Buffalo takes it the under there. I don't think Detroit scores enough points to hit the over in this one. Maybe Buffalo puts up like 40 and I just look like an idiot, but that over under 54 is super high. Is that right? I have to check that. 54 and a half. Now it's moved up and now Buffalo's minus nine and a half. Second game of the slate, we have the Giants at Dallas. Dallas is minus nine. 44 and a half over under. So we have the obvious plays on the Dallas side of the ball. We have Dak, we have Dalton Schultz, we have Tony Pollard, we have CeeDee Lamb. They're obviously getting into your lineup on the Giants side of the ball. Saquon's an obvious play. I think Daniel Jones is, uh, we'll get to him in a little bit. But if you look at Dallas, pretty much everyone else besides the guys I just named have been disappointing. You know, the Michael Gallups and all the other receivers are receiving options. The only player I would consider on the borderline of being able to play is Zeke. And he did last week exactly what we expected. He came back from his injury, had like 12, 15 pointless catches carries but they get in the end zone twice so they used them on the goal line Tony Pollard is more explosive he has to score from like 30 yards out if he is going to score but he does that that's his role However, I want to hit you with some crazy Zeke stats against the New York Giants. So Zeke has scored a touchdown against the Giants in five straight games. He has scored seven in that time span. What's crazier? Zeke has scored a touchdown or went over 100 rushing yards in every single career game he's ever had against the Giants. If you discount his rookie year, he has had a touchdown and or 139 scrimmage yards against the Giants in every single career game, discounting his rookie year. He shows up to play against the New York Giants. Dallas is a nine-point favorite. They're an average defense against the run. They just let up that three-touchdown day to Jamal Williams, and at this point in their careers, like Jamal Williams is just Zeke with passion. That's all they are as football players at this point. So I actually love given the history. I know none of that is predictive as to who Zeke is right now, what he's going to do in this game, but Zeke's 10 and a half point fantasy score on prize picks. That's full PPR. Absolutely love that. So a lot of Zeke love here. That said, Pollard by 90. He's clearly at a top 15 running back easily at this point, if not higher. He's going to get the work. He's going to continue to be the guy in this backfield. I have Zeke, you know, just as from a fantasy perspective, I have him just inside my top 30 running back. So between him and Swift, they're they're right on the edge of that. You know, can I start him? Can I not? I think if you're riskier, you can go with Swift, but I would probably play Zeke over Swift. This is going to be one of those films that I make where every comment is like, this aged well, this aged well. I can only imagine how many bad takes I'm going to have in this fucking video, all right? So let's make a f let's make a few more. We have the Dallas defense where uh, Michael Parsons got a little bit banged up on Sunday. All reports say that he should be fine to go for Thursday. When you're looking at the Giants passing offense with Wondell Robinson now out for the season, the only wide receiver you can even look at is Darius Slayton. I would take more than a look at him. Get, he's getting a whole fucking scowl. He's getting a whole stare down right now if I'm looking at putting him into my lineup, because over the last month of the season, man, he's averaging over 76 receiving yards per game. He's got two touchdowns in the last four games. He's coming off a, a season high of 10 targets. Daniel Jones is clearly looking at him as the one right now. He is super playable in this one. Uh, the biggest concern for me is Dallas's pass rush. I mean, they're coming off a seven sack, 15 quarterback hit performance against the Minnesota Vikings. So it's like, does Slayton even have time to develop a route down the field? Does Daniel Jones have time to sit in the pocket and wait for Slayton to get open down the field? That would be my biggest concern. If they put up an interception prop for Daniel Jones in this one on prize picks, it's not up there yet. But if they do, we are hitting that over. Oh, it's up there. Boom. We're hitting the over on the Daniel Jones over 0.5 interceptions prop. That is a, that is a fucking guarantee. So my game prediction for this one, I think Dallas pulls it out pretty pretty handedly. They're too the Giants are just too banged up with their weapons with their offensive line. So I got Dallas 29, New York Giants 17. 
last game of the slate. We've got New England at Minnesota. Minnesota is two and a half point favorites at home, 42 and a half over under. Now, New England quietly won four of their last five games. Their D is playing kind of fucking nice right now. When we look at it from a fantasy perspective, they have allowed the single fewest fantasy points half PPR, two running backs on the year. They've allowed one rushing touchdown to opposing starting running backs. They have allowed the sixth fewest running back receptions. They've allowed the third fewest fantasy points to wide receivers, the second fewest receptions overall to wide receivers, the ninth fewest receptions to tight ends. So it's like, where the fuck are these teams getting it done from against uh, against New England? It's just low scoring, muddy, in the grit. We want to grind you down. We want to slow you down type defense from New England. You're obviously playing Jefferson. You're obviously playing Cook, even though all that shit I just said. You're going to play Hawkinson because he's so involved in this fucking offense, but it could be an ugly game, right? I'd rather not play Thielen if I don't have to. The guy has literally no ceiling. He's just driving around in a fucking convertible at this point. It's a tough matchup. I would not play him if I don't have to. For the Pat side of the ball, the split between Ramondre and Harris, on the surface, it does seem like it's closing because Harris performed better than Stevenson did on the ground. The percentage in terms terms of splits like snaps are it's still very wide Ramondre had 78 percent of the snaps last week Harris only had 24 so you're playing Stevenson obviously as like a top 12 top 15 option as he's been all year Harris is playable but you kind of know what you're going to get it's like if he gets into the end zone you're obviously happy you're going to get 12 to 14 points if he doesn't you're going to have five six seven points tops and you're going to feel shitty about it because he does not catch passes so he's not someone I'm like ready to get right back into my line into my lineup just because he had an efficient day on the ground last week however the Vikings are susceptible to to these bigger Damian Harris prototype running backs when it comes to allowing touchdowns. A.J. Dillon, two by Jamal Williams, Latavius Murray, David Montgomery, two by Zeke last week, uh, two by Singletary. So it's like these early down style of runners do well against them, do well on the goal line. They have a tough time stopping them on the goal line, which is where Damian Harris could come into play. And Minnesota does allow the eighth most fantasy points to the running back position overall. I think you could play both of them. Obviously, Stevenson's multiple tiers above Harris at this point. When we look at the pass catchers, Jacoby Myers is the only one that you can even look at in a pass uniform. Um, He's pretty much just Adam Thielen on the other side of the ball with maybe a little bit more upside. I would take Myers over Thielen, but like I'm not excited to play him. I'm not excited for this game. I have New England pulling the up upset 20 to 17 in this one not going to be a fight this is the game you pass out for you eat from 12 to 6 to 7 you eat and you drink and then you just fall asleep for this piece of shit game that's how thanksgiving is going to play out i just told you all the fucking rules i just told you what squares to hit on prize picks again make sure you go hit that justin jefferson 0.5 receiving yards prop use promo code bdge the link is the first link in the description quick recap we've got jefferson over 0.5 receiving yards josh allen over 24 and a half fantasy points we've got zeke over 10 and a half fantasy points we've got daniel jones over 0.5 interceptions i'm also going to slide this in as the homie noah does honorable mentions less than 40 and a half rushing yards and i believe noah will probably be dropping his prize picks slip for tomorrow's video this is going out wednesday so i just want to get this out for you guys because i'm thankful for you for real thank you guys for supporting for however many days months weeks years you have been enjoy your thanksgiving tell your family i said hi tell your mother and your sister i said hi drop a comment down below if you got any sit star questions rankings will be up before kickoff on thursday morning y'all know where to find them on bdge.co become a big dog member go sign up for prize picks most of all though i love you (laughs) 